So today we've got ourselves a bit of a comparison video here. Um, doing my normal duties as such, scrolling around YouTube, um, looking at reenacting stuff. I haven't seen very much, if all, if any at all, content about um, those popular, it was quite popular Denix Car 98 replicas that you see out there. I haven't seen very many videos of those, and none that I know of that actually compare them to an actual Car 98. So today I've decided to kind of take it upon myself to do that. Um, quite recently, actually a week ago, I was able to pick myself up an actual Car 98, which is that one you see in the middle there. And uh, for this, today's comparison video, we actually have a second one that was lent to me by my very good friend, which is that one at the very top there. And um, this rifle you see at the very bottom, that is the Denix uh, 98K replica. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a closer look at all of them and we're going to mainly just compare the Denix to actual Car 98s and we're going to see if it's an authentic and faithful reproduction to um, actual 98Ks. Clearing the workspace up a bit here, uh, hopefully you can kind of see the dimensions of the, just the two rifles compared side by side with the original being on top, if you haven't been able to tell yet, and the Denix replica at the bottom. Uh, they managed to get the dimensions quite well. Uh, from a distance, they look quite similar. I would just say the stock color is the only real um, thing that kind of makes you take a second look at it, really. But um, as for the dimensions, the rifle is the exact same length as the original. Um, the weight difference, however, is substantial. The original rifle weighs something about 9 pounds. However, this Denix replica weighs just 6 Alrighty, so taking a closer look here up at the front of the rifles, we're going to start off with the front sights of each. We have the Denix on the left side, the mid-war 98 in the middle, and the early war 98 on the right side. The Denix replica comes with a groove cut for a front sight hood, however it does not include a front sight hood. Uh, when, you come, when it comes straight from the mail, it will just come with the simple blade. It will fit uh, a 98k front sight hood, however, they just don't include one for whatever reason. We have the mid-war with the groove cut for a front sight hood, and we have the early war with no groove cut for a front sight hood. Uh, these two are missing their cleaning rods. The one in the middle is a Russian capture, and the one on this far right here does not have a good excuse yet why he doesn't have his, so <laughs> uh, excuse those two. Uh, this Denix has a clean run, however, it is non-removable. It is non-functional, non-removable, uh, and that presents a problem when we get up to these bayonet lugs here. Each of these rifles have a bayonet lug. Um, however, of course, the two original 98s will fit a bayonet. The Denix will not. Uh, the groove cut for a uh, 98K bayonet uh, in the, the uh, handle of the bayonet cannot fit over this large cleaning rod here. This cleaning rod is not the original size, the original proper size of a 98K bayonet. The lock, the lug for the bayonet does have a locking point, so I do believe that if this cleaning rod was deleted, it possibly will fit a 98 bayonet. However, with this in the way and being non-removable, there's no chance of that happening anytime soon. Moving up to the nose caps, we see here, uh, the Denix replica has gone for an early war type nose cap. Um, I should add all of the fittings on this Denix are of cast material, uh, while the originals were uh, properly milled pieces of metal. This seems to be like pot metal, is my best description of the sort, with seams on both the tops and bottoms of the Denix. My mid-war has a simplified, still milled piece, however, um, there are no fancy U-shaped cuts on it. While the early war retains its fancy cuts, milled components, no seams. Moving slightly further up the rifles here, we 
we have these uh, takedown levers right here. Of course, on the real rifles, they do function. Uh, when you press these levers down, you are able to slide the nose caps off, and so will this uh, metal piece in here. Um, the Denix replica does not have such a feature. That is a solid uh, part. It is built into the nose cap. It is not removable. It seems... Um, the Denix has gone for a, I'm guessing, a Kriegsmodell type um, barrel band. That is probably my only explanation for why there is this large seam running around. If you look at pictures of original Kriegsmodell types, um, it is a large, I believe it's a weld that's going straight across. However, this is not a weld. This is, looks like a casting seam. Uh, with this exception for this early war one on this far right, I believe this to be a, a Gewehr 98 barrel band. So the uh, World War I German service rifle, that was the barrel band for that. Original early war Car 98s had a barrel band much simpler to this mid-war one. However, this groove in the middle was a lot larger and a lot cleaner looking uh, comparing the two. And while we can see the stocks, at least a slightly better color, you can see a field repair right here. Uh, made to this stock and this early war stock at some point. Um, my mid war rifle and my friend's early war rifle, they both have uh, early war stocks. Uh, mine was swapped out at some point. I don't exactly know when. However, these early war stocks were made out of, I believe, I have my notes right here, solid walnut. <laughs> so later, quite early on into the war, they ran out of walnut stocks, ran out of oak stocks, so they went to uh, laminated stocks with several sheets plastered together. I do not know what type of wood this is. It is neither walnut, it is neither oak. Um, it is not laminated, so it is a solid continuous piece of wood. However, it is quite, um, I will say it is quite cheap in look and feel. See on my uh, mid-war 98K here, uh, I have just the, you know, your standard curved milled piece here. However, Farther back on this Denix right here, you can see, the, I'm assuming they're going for a Kriegsmodell type trigger, with with Kriegsmodell ones being two pieces of stamped sheet metal uh, placed onto each other. Um, you can probably see those two ridges right there. I'm going to bring it up a little closer. However, it is not two pieces of sheet metal, it is a simple cast with you can see that seam running across. It is cast to look like two pieces of metal stamped on top of each other. Right there, perfect. Um, the front sight, of course the front sight, being an actual rifle, my front sight does adjust. However, on the Denix, um, you can move it up for whatever reason. However, it's not adjustable. It does not move. I don't exactly know why they chose to do that however that's what they chose to go for we're going to take a closer look at the actions here in a second however i just wanted to skip farther back and take a look at the butt plates here um you can see my mid-war carnity it should have a cut butt plate like this however the stock has been replaced at some point i don't know if that was during uh wartime or during russian refurb however mine has an or a uh, early war 98k stock with a fat butt flat butt plate and the uh, disassembly disc. Comparing the two disassembly discs here to each other, um, for some reason the Denix disc is significantly larger than an original disassembly disc uh, in that regard. Denix has gone for a mid-war 98K, so they have chosen the cupped butt plate while still retaining a disassembly disc. Um, later war Kriegsmodell variant would completely delete the disc overall and move to just a single hole in the uh, cup of the butt plate here. I'm going to attempt to give the best angle here possible, but uh, I may not reflect that on the camera, so you're just going to have to take my word for it. The Denix 98K replica is s slightly l wider than an original 98K. Um, it seems most of the width is coming here from the stock. The stock seems to be about double the thickness as the original ones right here. Um, of course, on an original uh, bolt, the dis disassembly lever works, so it comes right out. On the Denix, it does not. The original 98K will cock upon the first uh, latch of the bolt, so 
So there you go, your firing pin is set now. Uh, the Denix will replicate that, as you can probably see right there. So a bit of a demonstration here, I'm just gonna show you. These are inert rounds, no primer, the primer is spent, nothing inside of them, they are dead. You can load a CAR-98 either one round at a time or using the stripper clip guide up top, put them in, like such. It should come to you as no surprise that they function as they should. The footage was corrupted, so I have to add this in right now. Um, you cannot actually fit any 8mm rounds in here. There's a plug in the chamber, so you get the round about a quarter of the way through, and it's just going to hit that plug. Uh, there's also no elevator for the rounds, so um, you can probably put around two 8mm rounds in before uh, it just you run out of room. Uh, you cannot close the bolts with any rounds in as well, and the the stripper clip guide that is on this Denix is far too small to fit actual 98k stripper clips. They will not fit. Um, on the Denix, however, I cannot report the same for it. Um, it feels very sloppy, very loose, very tinny. Um, nothing like an original cycle of the bolt here. Um, I have also had this problem where this the it seems this bolt it's not like this on the original however the bolt on the Denix will come loose and separate from the extractor in the front of what should be uh, that portion there um, I don't know why this is a problem on this it doesn't seem to be held in by anything other than just simple uh, tension of the two metal pieces fitting together and also the safety mechanism on the Denix. It is extremely loose. It is, the original is not like that at all. You can see here there's a little bit of movement but that's for it to go actually into half safe and actually into full safe. On the Denix it there is movement however there's no way for it to go half safe and no way for it to go full safe. It is non-functioning in that regard. Cycling the bolt, you will run into the issue of the safety portion swooping down and around and locking up into the stock right here. Um, what I've found to counter this is if you just kind of finagle it enough, you can get it sitting back into position to where it should be, uh, you know, a normal cycle. However, working the bolt on this on the Denix is, it is, I'll, I will say this, it is not, it is not desirable. Uh, it is nothing like an original. Again, more corrupted footage, so I have to end the video like this. Um, in my opinion, I don't think that the Denix is a very good reproduction of the 98K. Um, I can't speak for their other reproductions made by the same company. I don't, I don't know what they're like. I don't own any of the others, so I can't speak on that behalf. But for as for the 98K goes, uh, this is not a very good reproduction. Um, there's just too many things wrong with it, and it seems a bit sloppy the way it's just overall put together, um, just in general. Uh, I would say get your hands on an actual... 98k on an actual Mauser rifle. Um, the if you live in a part of the world where firearms are regulated to a certain extent, or if they're just hard to come by, um, I know easier said than done. But I would say get your mitts on a, a deactivated rifle, so one that doesn't actually fire, but that's still actually original. Or um, wait till you can get your hands on an actual Mauser. Um, the way the, the amount that they charge for these Denix replicas is at least for the 98k can't speak for the others but at least for this rifle is absurd it's something about something like $250 for something like this when you can go out and get yourself like me I spent $400 on the Mauser that you see in the middle right there or 450 or so my friend spent exactly 400 on his on that top one right there there you can find them for the right price. You don't have to spend an arm and a leg. You know, don't get 
don't buy one from Bubba at the gun show for a thousand dollars. They're they're out there. They made fifteen million of them, so at least you know if you're in the U.S., they should be relatively easy to find. Um, but I wanted to keep my opinion out of this as much as I can. Um, just sort of add it in at the end of the video here. Let you make your own decision. But I'm sure you can see at the end of this, you know what things really are. Um, hopefully, I'm gonna have more reenacting content out soon. So. Uh, it'll keep my channel from dying, and yeah, thanks for watching.